up, we have Christina, who is a PhD student at the Bul Bulgarian Academy of Sciences and working on neural networks, which is obviously a very computationally intensive uh, process. And so she's working on uh, clusters, which is what we're going to hear about here. And I have the actual, let's see, I like, I like the listing of, of what it is here. Open source, homebrew, mini cluster, cons consisting of a Redex Pro single board computer. So we're going to hear a lot more about this, but please welcome Christina to the stage. So thank you so much for the pres uh, presentation. My name is Kristina Kapanova, and I'm a PhD student. Uh, hopefully we'll graduate with computer science degree in about a couple of months. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit what we have did there. Uh, I do, as a research, um, post-learning strategies for neural network architectures, evolutionary algorithms for automatic neural network architectures. But last year, uh, on top of that, I decided that it would be a fun idea to go and dig a little bit in quantum physics. So what we did was uh, take a uh, TCAT 2 for uh, electronic transport simulation in uh, nanoscale uh, semiconductor devices. And <laughs> It's a mouthful. Uh, and for both of those topics, <laughs> we need a supercomputer. But unfortunately, something happened when we, our institution went from the old supercomputer to the new one, and we were left without a computational uh, structure. So I needed a supercomputer to finish my PhD. And at the same time, something very amazing happened. Uh, we won a project for uh, fundamental research. And my boss said, hey, we have some money left. So I'll give it to you. You do whatever you want with them as long as you produce some results at the end. And I said, well, I always like to play with electronics since I was a kid. So why not try some develop developing boards? and uh, make a cluster out of them and try out our neural networks and our quantum simulations and see whether that will work. So what I did was start searching on the market what are the available boards, what I can do. I already had a PC Duino because uh, I was starting to do a, home, a smart home in my home, annoying my mother to no end with that, and uh, I had several options, BeagleBone, Raspberry Pi, Odroid, and Radzga. And uh, of course, because we had a computationally intensive uh, simulations in our line of work, uh, BeagleBone and Raspberry Pi were out of the question immediately. And we were left with basically Odroid and Radzga. And what they have in common is that uh, they're quad-core processors with uh, two gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes of flash. Uh, the power supply, so supply is rather low. But unfortunately for me, Odroid at that time was not offered in Bulgaria. And uh, due to some financial limitations, I stopped at Radzga, and this was my choice to do the cluster with it. The hardware, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, open source hardware. It's uh, ARM uh, quad core at 1.6 gigahertz, uh, rock chip processor. It has uh, two gigabytes of DDR at uh, 800 megahertz RAM, uh, eight gigabytes of uh, flash NAND, and it runs both um, Android and Linux. Uh, of course, I didn't know, need Android, so I uh, removed it. Uh, it has a GPU, which we are starting to use now in our computation, uh, so we can maximize uh, our use of uh, resources. And unfortunately for this, the LAN connection is limited up to 100 megabits, but that's OK, because we are mostly doing Monte Carlo simulation, which does not require that much of a um, uh, communication between the Ethernets. Uh, it also has wireless, but we don't use that. It has uh, USB ports, which we use sometimes uh, for faster um, data transfer. And uh, basically, we stopped at this board, we bought it. And what I did was to create this custom uh, size box, uh, which I created from scratch. And uh, what you do is 
you put the board on a piece of plastic and you plug it like that in the box. You put the connections on the um, switch and on the USB hub for a power supply. And I created a script that automatically detects when you hot plug a new board and you start calculations. So basically, uh, I, there's some uh, empty space here for better uh, air conditioning. And on the bottom of this, I left space for three fans should I need it for uh, some reason. So far, I haven't need anything. And here I made a little mistake. It's for four boards, not for eight. Sorry about that. Basically, the whole thing uh, costed around 500 euro to be done, which uh, for me was great because we were left with spare change as well. And what I did with the software is to remove the stock uh, operating system, the Android, uh, the GNU Linux distribution, and to get the Linaro distro, which I also customized for our specific needs because we didn't need a lot of the uh, software there, but we need a specific one. So I also put some additional packages, uh, Python MPI, OpenMP. Uh, here you can see FreeBasic. My colleague um, introduced me to FreeBasic, and I'm such a fan of this uh, language now that almost all the code I develop, even the neural networks, are on FreeBasic, and I save so much space. It's not, uh, I cannot explain how happy I am, I am about that. And I have rsync, OpenSSH, uh, in uh, editors uh, too, uh, because uh, my colleagues and I have different preferences, so I put two of them. And here I can show you some performance tests on various boards. And this one here is the Intel Sandy uh, Bridge i5 processor. Of course, it's the best one, but the Radska Rock is over here. Here, the bigger uh, plot is the better. Razga is just on the third place after Odroid, so it's not so bad for the RAM speed uh, test. Uh, for a simple C++ program that calculates pi, of course, uh, I saw that the Razga is on second place, which is wonderful. We do a lot of, uh, all our code is either on C, or uh, free basics, so for us, uh, we are trying to get as much computational power as possible, and our code is also instrumental to, for this, to save as much uh, power as possible. And the final test is PyBench, uh, which is uh, for build function calls in nested for loops, which we have a lot of them, and uh, Razga is again on second place just after uh, I think uh, the i5 processor. So we were very happy performance-wise. This is some tests that I did once I uh, received the boards. And uh, you can see here that single core performance really well. The four cores also really well. CPU idle uh, power consumption and for one core and for all cores is amazing. We save so much power consumption considering that we use super, super computers and we pay immense amount of money for um, power. And this is something that I use for um, when we created the papers. It's a NASA parallel benchmark tools. Uh, they are known for their parallel processing uh, knowledge and they've developed those, that tool. So I implemented it. It consists of uh, various uh, benchmark problems, but we implemented two. One is EP benchmark. Uh, which is important for us because it's uh, typical for uh, Monte Carlo methods. And you can see, uh, I've tested it with several uh, different types of uh, situations from one to 16 cores. And the time in, in seconds drops drastically. And the rate uh, of uh, data tra transfer is almost linear, almost. But uh, this is great for us, just amazing uh, tests. And another test that I, I'm uh, showing you here, it's um, FT benchmark, a computational kernel of a 3D fast Fourier transform. Uh, I've tested it with eight, uh, four and eight cores here. The results are not so good because it uh, needs a lot of uh, transfer of data in the Ethernet uh, port, and that's why 
it's not the, the board is not uh, well suited for this kind of communication. But our tests, our work is not uh, relying on this. So for us, this is not a problem. And some additional notes: uh, we are not using the Wi-Fi module currently. Uh, we use a lot of SD cards uh, for our, uh, storing data. And one, what I didn't know in the beginning, and I should have read, but I was so excited to have the boards, is to read that uh, the MAC address is not hardwired in the board, which means that once you uh, install the board, uh, you have to change the MAC address if you have one, the, more than one board. And when I put four boards in this, started the computation and started going from one board to the next, to the third, to the fourth, I was basically freezing my system and nothing was working until I finally found out that the MAC address of all of the boards was essentially the same. So I changed this, every board has its own MAC address and uh, now everything works uh, smoothly. We do a lot of tests and uh, we are just uh, testing GPU's capabilities in the moment. And what we do on this cluster here is uh, three things, natural language processing, deep neural networks currently, and quantum physics, which has a plethora of difficulties. And this is the first uh, test we run. This is the initial outlook of the cluster. And you can see I've actually put two pieces of uh, metal so I can keep everything together. I was so excited. I ran to my colleague and said, let's run it and see what it can do. And we run f full quantum simulation, time dependent, uh, which is, in our case, computationally affordable. And we manage to, to run it. Uh, here are some of the formulas, and this is the one we use. It's from 2015, developed by us. And uh, what I was expecting when I was doing this calculation is that because I developed it in the summer, in 40 degrees heat, I was saying this thing will blow up without any uh, cooling system. But actually it didn't, it ran the calculation and what you're seeing here actually is run a result from the quantum simulation from this uh, little cluster and it's a cellular automata of quantum uh, system. These are some interesting results we got. but. Probably the most interesting will be this for you. Uh, what this is, is two electrons getting near each other. And this over here, it's uh, the Pauli exclusion principle. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm not going to go into details. But it's basically two fermions cannot be at the same quantum space simultaneously. And we were able to show this result with this little machine over here that costs 500 uh, euros, which for us was amazing, and we published the results, and everybody was uh, very happy with this. Oh. And this here is the output of our calculation on the machine in this hot July day. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> If you have any questions. Yeah, well, what is, I was wondering what, what is the Monte Carlo test? Well, shortly, we are, what we are doing is in the, this physical interpretation, we shoot a lot of random numbers. And this is what we are doing. That's why we are not particularly interested in communication between um, uh, on the internet port, because when we're shooting this number, we're, we're evolving the system uh, independently. So this is for us very important. That's why it works like a charm on this thing, although it's not suitable for every, uh, every application. Yes, I can tell you the story because it's a very old one. <laughs> uh, later I'll tell you the story. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you.